In this video, I want to look at the graphs of sine and cosine. So let's start with the graph of sine. So I actually want to consider the function f of x equal to sine of x. Here is the basic graph of sine of x here. So a couple of things that we can note about this graph. The domain is negative infinity to infinity. I can plug in any number that I want along the x-axis, and I can still take the sine of any number. The range is negative 1 to 1. All of my outputs are between negative 1 and 1. My y-intercept is 0, 0. I cross the y-axis at 0. This is because sine of 0 is 0. I have multiple x-intercepts. They're all of the form k times pi comma 0, where k is any integer. So we have pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, etc. As well as negative pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi, etc. And we also have a period of 2 pi. So the period is how long it takes before we start repeating. We go up, down, back up, and then we start repeating this graph. And so we have a total length of 2 pi that repeats indefinitely. I now want to look at how I can change this function sine of x to produce different graphs and see how changing little pieces of it will affect the graph. The first thing I want to do is multiply it by a number, f of x equal to a sine of x. And this absolute value of a is known as the amplitude. So multiplying the function sine of x by a number will change the amplitude. So let's look at the graph and see what that actually does. Here I have the graph of sine x, and I have this slider that will change the value of a. If I make a bigger, I can see that the height of this curve grows. So my range is changing. At this point, my range is between negative 6 and 6. I can keep going as well. I can do it at 2. That would be my range from negative 2 to 2. And if we move in the negative direction, it flips the graph over across the x-axis and then once again changes the amplitude. So if I let this play, we can see that an absolute value of a being large gives me a large height, a large amplitude. Absolute value of a being small gives me a small amplitude, a very short height. And the negative is going to flip this around the x-axis. The next thing I can change is I can do sine of bx. Instead of multiplying sine by a number, I can multiply x by a number and then find the sine of that new number. This is going to change the period. Instead of it repeating every 2 pi, it's going to repeat every 2 pi over the absolute value of b. So let's look at the graph and see if we can observe this. Here I have my graph of sine of x. And if I make b larger, you can see it's going to repeat more and more often. We get it to repeat much, much more often and a lot faster. It kind of shrinks this curve in. On the other hand, if I get it closer to zero, you can see it really stretches out. It doesn't repeat as often. The curves really, really stretch out in the horizontal direction. If I were to flip this in the negative direction, it flips this graph around the x axis or around the y axis rather than the x axis. So moving it between positive and negative will flip the graph around the y axis. Next, I'm going to look at f of x equal to sine of x minus c. So this minus c is going to be a horizontal shift in our graph. So this is essentially going to shift the graph left to right. So let's le actually look at the graph and see how this is done. Here's my normal graph for sine of x. And you can see if I let c be a positive number, it's going to shift this graph. This graph is just moving further, further over to the right. Meanwhile, if I make it negative, it's going to be shifting to the left. So positive numbers will shift it to the right. Negative numbers will shift it to the left. And this tells you how far it's shifted horizontally. 
The last way I can change my sine function is just adding a number to the end. And this will give me a vertical shift. This will shift my function up and down. So let's take a look at this graph. Here I have my function f of x equal to sine x plus d. So here's my normal sine graph. I can see that for positive values of d, it's just going to shift my graph up further along the y-axis. The and negative values are going to shift it further and further down the y-axis. So adding a number to the end is going to tell me how much this is shifted vertically off of the x-axis. Next, I want to look at the graph of cosine of x. So it is here. We can once again see that the domain is negative infinity to infinity. I can plug in any number I need to. And just like with sine, the range is negative 1 to 1. This time, my y-intercept is 0, 1. I cross the y-axis at 1. My x-intercepts are of the form k pi over 2 comma 0 where k is an odd integer. And we can also see that once again my period is 2 pi. If I go from 0 to 2 pi, this little u looking thing will repeat over and over and over and over indefinitely. And we can manipulate the graph of cosine just like we could the graph of sine by multiplying and adding things in different locations. Here is my standard graph of cosine. Just like before, if I change the value of a, the number I multiply by it changes the height. And making it negative will flip it along the x axis. So multiplying the entire function by a number will change the height of my waves. If I multiply x by a number, it's going to change the frequency. It's going to change how many times it oscillates here. It's going to change my period. And just like before, negative numbers will flip it across the y-axis. Adding or subtracting a number from x, so if I do cosine of x minus c, is going to cause this horizontal shift. A positive number will shift to the right, whereas a negative number will shift to the left. And then finally, adding a number to the end is going to change the height. Positive numbers will shift this graph up, whereas negative numbers will shift this graph down. So it works just like the graph of sine.